Did you see all the weather? I was checking it this morning and it said that there were supposed to be firestorms in like my sleepy state this morning looking at the weather. I was like, firestorms? Like it's going to rain fire? <laughs> like how is it going to be a firestorm? Like our fire? <laughs> like, how is everybody just being so casual? Yeah, like this? why are there, are we going to have things like fire bugs yes like what are dragons up there and they're like spitting fire at things no i really had no clue what it meant i was like fire storms what does it mean i don't even know what it means it means that there's gonna be wind gusts up to like 40 plus miles per hour it's like and it's like a fire yeah it's a burn ban so don't burn anything it would be a lot cooler if like just bursts of flames were Way flying cooler. through the clouds. Also far more terrifying. <laughs> yes, exactly. Like, you don't know. It's a new <laughs> thing. Thanks, COVID. Thanks, <laughs> COVID. <laughs> uh, this is the Witch's Magic Murder of Mystery Podcast. <laughs> hey, guys, I'm Kara. <laughs> I'm Megan. It's 2022. <laughs> Hi. Happy Tuesday. Mm-hmm. I have a fun episode for us today. Yay. Yeah. It's a witchy magic one. Fun. So do we have anything else before I just randomly jump in here? Uh, don't forget if you're a Patreon person and you're or you're wanting to be a Patreon person, uh, they've changed the rules now. So when you sign up for new members, it's going to you're going to be billed based on the date that you signed up. If you're previously signed up and you're still on there, it's just going to be based off the first of the month. It used to be that if you joined on, like, August 29th, it would charge you that day and then right again on September 1st, yeah. which is a little annoying. It is. Now it doesn't do that. Now it's going to charge you on the same day every month. Yep. Depending on what day you joined. Yes. So it is very nice. <laughs> also, speaking of Patreon, if you're a Patreon subscriber, several of the blog posts this year have been about witchy holidays. Yes. Because we do one witchy blog post a month. Mm-hmm. Some of them are more well-known than others, but possibly the most well-known is Samhain. Oh, love it. It marks the end of the harvest season and the beginning of winter. Mm-hmm. So we're heading right into it right now, yeah. which is why we're doing this episode. <laughs> it's amazing. <laughs> In the Northern hem- Hemisphere, I, P.S., typed Samhain uh, phonetically throughout this whole thing so, so that I remember. won't say it wrong. Yes, because when you look at it, you're like, uh-uh. You want no, to say Sam Hain. Yeah. It's not Sam Hain. Um, I think I've even said it that way on the podcast at some point. Anyway, in the Northern Hemisphere, Samhain is on November 1st, but it has Celtic origins. And for the Celtic people... Me too. Oh. <laughs> the day began at sunset rather than sunrise. So today, Samhain celebrations begin on October 31st. Mm-hmm. Um, my granny's family which is another thing i've learned yesterday yep. they come from ireland so i think they probably also have the celtic yeah. and then my papa's family comes from scotland uh-huh. so. in the southern hemisphere salon happens on or around april 30th just fyi but if you're with us in the northern hemisphere it's coming up mm-hmm. it was also known as the beginning of a new celtic year and some people refer to it as the witch's new year as well so fun so like i said since pronunciation of words is such a thing Words on this podcast. Amazing. <laughs> it's spelled S A M H A I N. And there's even still a few different ways to say it. Definitely not Sam Hain, but I've heard other versions that all kind of, you know, Samhain is pretty uh-huh. close. Right. Right. <laughs> They're all pretty similar. Um, but from what I can get, Samhain is what I'm going Listen, with. Listen, uh, looking up baby names, like looking up Irish ones, mm-hmm. I'm like, I need the pronunciation of this because it's spelled like this, but it's not this. Like Sersha. Mm-hmm. Mm-mm. No. No. Well, there's no reason that S-A-M-H-A-I-N should no. be Samhain. There's no. just none. <laughs> no. <laughs> but it is. So I feel you all. Okay. So in the same way that, as we all know, I like to understand why a person is the way they are when we talk about some of the crime cases yes. on this podcast. I also like to understand why holiday, holidays, 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 <laughs> holidays, holidays. <laughs> why holidays are celebrated in the ways that they are. This is an ancient holiday. And if we're going through the motions of Samhain without understanding why, mm-hmm. well, that's just cultural appropriation. So let's talk a little bit about the history of Samhain so that if you observe some of these traditions, you know why you're doing right. them. Yes. So, on the Wheel of the Year, Samhain sits opposite Beltane, Mm -hmm. which we talked about back in episode 144. So, the two holidays balance each other. Yep. 
Beltane happens in the spring. It's the Festival of Fertility. We had a lot of great jokes about maypoles. Oh, yeah. But basically, Beltane is all about light and life. And so Samhain, as its opposite, is all about darkness and death. Good old Persephone. Yes. And Hecate and all of my favorites. <laughs> so the whole darkness and death thing sounds like a downer. Yeah. But it isn't. Mm-mm. You can't experience light without going through the darkness. Like right, this is exactly. a necessary part of nature. It's how it was There's designed. There's not going to be any growth unless you have Exactly. It. Yeah. So Samhain is first mentioned in 9th century Irish literature. It was celebrated with large gatherings and feasts. And, you know, it's the time of the year where everything is starting to die. So death is kind of this theme. Mm-hmm. And it was believed that the boundary between this world and the other world, which is the realm of the dead, thinned during this time, making it easier to communicate with the dead as well as for spirits or fairies to cross over. So fun. Yes. And they would open up ancient burial mounds to help facilitate the communication. Right. Druids or Celtic priests, they thought that the presence of these spirits made it easier to make predictions about the future. So Samhain festivals and celebrations became a popular time for fortune telling. Oh, Yeah. So that's why. Uh, there's so many times during this where I was like, oh, well, that's why it became yeah. a thing. <laughs> Which is the whole reason we're talking about exactly. it. Exactly. So food and drink were laid out for the fairies basically as an offering. Mm-hmm. It was to appease them and to also ensure their help in getting the livestock to survive the winter. So, Because everything they did revolved around nature right. and the natural cycles of things uh-huh. and wanting everything. So now you're like the harvest season is dying. Yep. The harvest is over, but we got to get through the winter mm-hmm. so that we can grow things again. Um, bonfires were lit to protect people from bad fairies, as well as to help light the way for the spirits. Druids would light a sacred bonfire, and it was believed that the fire, smoke, and ashes had protective and cleansing powers. <laughs> How cool. In some cases, all other fires were extinguished and relit from this bonfire, which bonded the community together. Oh. Uh, they did that during Beltane, too. And yeah. I remember I just love that idea that it, you're all connected by that right. same fire. Exactly. People also set places at their tables for the souls of dead relatives because they believed that this was the night that they would come visit. So yeah. <laughs> imagine a plate just being tossed across the table <laughs> where the person was want just I hated this. <laughs> Why do they think I liked this? <laughs> so yeah, they thought it was like they would come back and visit. So that was an important part of Samhain. It was a time to honor the dead, paying respects to the loved ones who have passed on. Mm-hmm. So This is something that has popped up a lot in conversations I've had with some of you all, either in DMs or in the Facebook group. Ever since Kara did that episode on the Indonesia people um, with the law, I can't think of the name. I mean, I can picture it in my head, but it was hard to pronounce. Yeah, I can't remember. Um, The festival where they dig up their dead ancestors Mm -hmm. every three years and dress them up and hang out with them. So, and I think I even said this during the episode, but I just think it's so important to have a connection to your past. And I know that isn't easy for a lot of us. Some of us don't even know what our past is right? or it's not a happy one right? or we think it's best forgotten. But I'm reading this book right now. <laughs> so we're just going on a tangent. Yeah, I love it. I read a line in it the other day that said, here's a quote, no experience is ever wasted. Everything that happens to us has merit, whether we recognize the surface significance of it or not. Everything in our lives ultimately leads us somewhere. Mm-hmm. The book is called It Didn't Start With You, How Inherited Family Trauma Shapes Who We Are and How to End the Cycle. Okay, I it's just really lighthearted read. I also bought that when it's we were great. at the Strand Bookstore in New York. It's really, really good. Yeah, but I couldn't um, fit it in my bag. So, so yeah, I can put it in the show notes for if anybody else is interested yeah. in, you know, this super light, cheery reading. I'm just saying, for some of us, honoring our ancestors is easy, and for some of us, it's not. Right. But for all of us, it's important. Mm-hmm. You are who you are, for better or worse, because of who they were. Right. And that doesn't mean that you're defined by your ancestors, Mm -hmm. but there is a connection there that matters, even if it's simply to recognize what you don't want to be. Right. The way you need to change the cycle. Okay. Back to Samhain. (laughs) Yes. This episode is about Samhain. (laughs) Oh, here you are. (laughs) It's a good time to remember anyone close to you who has died and to celebrate their life. And like I said, if you don't want to necessarily celebrate the life they lived, celebrate the lesson you learned from the life they lived and how right, you can use exactly. it to transform yourself. Mm-hmm. There's a tradition known as dumb supper. Mm-hmm. You left your doors and windows cracked so that the spirits could come in and you set the table with a spot for your ancestors. 
Everyone would eat, but only after you invited your ancestors to join in, giving your living relatives the opportunity to interact with your dead relatives. Oh. I love this. Yeah. Children would play games to entertain the dead, and the adults would update the dead on everything that like happened Willow. in the last year. Willow would. A hundred percent. Willow would just be chatting yeah. away with all of them. Yeah. Um, it's like one of those Christmas letters you get. You just sit down and you're like, okay, so here's everything that happened in the last yeah. year. Here's what you exactly. missed since you died. Here's what you <laughs> may have not seen when you were busy doing what you're doing. Whatever you're doing. Yeah. Been. Since it celebrates the beginning of winter and everything about the will of the year is about celebrating the cycles of nature, mm-hmm. we think about what winter means. The harvest season has come to an end. Plants are dying. Everything comes to an end. The symbolism of this is important for Samhain. So there's a stillness to be observed. This is a time to rest. And at the same time, we know that this is a cycle, so it's not going to be dark forever. Soon, it will be time for Imbolc and Ostera, which Mm -hmm. is another one we've talked about, when the world wakes up and we start preparing for spring. So take advantage of the resting time. It's given to us for a reason. Yeah. Give yourself permission to slow down. You don't need to be productive all the time. Your worth isn't determined by your productivity. Hear me (laughs) right now. (laughs) Take a break. It is so difficult. Let's do, 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 do the summer. Let's go upstate, Alexander. <laughs> so take a break and don't feel bad about it. This is what we are supposed to do. Right. That's why your body. It's been like trained out of us, but like this is the natural right. way of things. Your body will tell you it needs more rest. Slow down. Yeah. Yes. Reflect on the past. Dream about the future. Manifest. This break now prepares you for the hustle and productivity to come. Mm-hmm. But you need to rest to be at your best for it. And I am talking about this so much because I personally have a hard time allowing myself to rest. Well, so. especially when it starts getting darker outside sooner, like mm-hmm. just that mental, oh my gosh, like, yeah, it's dark. Well, and if you suffer from any sort of seasonal depression, yeah. as I totally am affected by, yeah. And then also, if I feel bad about myself, if I'm not productive, right. it's like this terrible cycle I get right. into. And you get stuck and you can't. Yeah. It's a loop. So it's important to allow yourself to rest and not feel bad about it. Mm-hmm. Okay. So now that we have a little bit of the history, yes. let's talk about how many facets of Halloween come from Samhain. This is probably going to be another one of those instances where you might hear someone say, oh, I would never celebrate a pagan holiday. And you can be like, you no, already do. You do. Yeah. Joke's on you, kid. <laughs> Here you are doing it every year. So here's how this all went down. Samhain was such a popular celebration Church leaders wanted to capitalize on that and reframe it as a Christian celebration in the hopes of helping to spread the word about Christianity. Now, in case you don't know this, this was done not just with Samhain. Right. It was done with several of the pagan holidays. Yes. Yeah. That Christians celebrate now. They have pagan roots. And the thing is, is that's okay. That's okay. It doesn't mean anything terrible about God or Christianity. Right. It's marketing, basically. So in the 5th century, oh goodness, what's his name? Pope, what is Boniface. that? Boniface. Do you think so? Boniface. We're going to say that. Was like, since you all like to honor the dead so much, we're going to do it as a Christian thing, and it's going to be on May 13th, and we're going to call it a All Saints Day. That's going to be the day we celebrate saints and martyrs. So then those who celebrated All Saints Day did it in the same way that people celebrated Samhain, yep. with bonfires and costumes. <laughs> and rather than offering food and goods to protect themselves from the bad spirit to the fairies, now they offered food and goods to the poor as a display of generosity and goodwill. They just kind of rebranded everything, right? right? Like right. it's like Samhain, but make Look it at Christian. The good we're doing it. Right. Yeah. The thing is, since Samhain isn't only about honoring the dead, it's also tied to the harvest right. season, it was still being celebrated in October, November. So it just never really took hold in yeah. May the way it the church yeah. wanted to. So in the ninth century, Pope Gregory, which is such a nice, normal, easy to pronounce mm-hmm. name, mm-hmm. made the strategic move of moving All Saints Day to November 1st. So it would directly coincide with right. Samhain. So October 31st became known as All Hallows Eve or yep. Halloween. And then Irish immigrants brought their traditions to America in the 19th century. And again, this does not mean if you're, well, I mean, I doubt any of you feel this way, but <laughs> if yeah. a Christian person were to hear this and think, It's offensive or insulting. It's for one, it's just the truth. But secondly, it's like, it's okay. It's fine. You're not doing anything. You're not. It's okay that it has these roots. It's actually like it was a 
strategic move made by the church to help try to spread the word about the church. Mm -hmm. That's fine. They do it in many ways. (sighs) There's also nothing wrong with the pagan (laughs) celebrations. I mean, it's just so frustrating. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I went into a rant about this to somebody earlier today. I'm just like, you know, if you want to get real technical about it, the pagans based everything about nature. Right. So then if you're a Christian, you believe that's all God's creation anyway. Right. Exactly. So like if they're celebrating nature, they're celebrating God. Just let it be. God's God's creation. Yeah. Just go (laughs) on with it. Come on. Just be happy. Go on. (sighs) Okay. So let's go through some of these Halloween traditions. Mm -hmm. Um, Wearing costumes. Oh God. Costumes back in the day were terrifying. Absolutely. And the reason, there's a reason they were terrifying. So during the ancient Samhain celebrations, people would dress in costumes in order to disguise themselves from fairies and spirits (gasps) who might want to harm them. So they would Mm -hmm. dress up as the fairies and spirits right. to like blend in. Mm-hmm. See, like I'm one of you. Yeah. Did you ever watch The Walking Dead? Oh yeah, loved it. Okay. Do you remember? Listen, this is not a spoiler. If you have not seen <laughs> the old episodes of The Walking like Dead, this is not my problem. No, but go there's a watch scene it. in which the way they realize they could get through a uh-huh. big zoo group of zombies is to cover themselves right. in dead, yeah, like blood and guts. Uh-huh. So they camouflage themselves from the zombies. So this yeah. is basically what. The ancient people were doing yeah. to, during Samhain. Yeah. Um, also, I never understood when I was watching The Walking Dead. Mm-hmm. I was like, well, that's the answer to the whole thing. This whole thing could end. All you yeah. got to do is be a zombie, too. Is, yeah, camouflage yourself in zombie blood. Mm-hmm. Show's over. Done. I figured it nobody's out. Nobody's going to get killed anymore. It's so confusing. Nobody's. Nobody Why don't needs anybody to listen to me? Why don't anybody listen to me? Why can't y'all <laughs> just listen? What's wrong with my words? <laughs> <laughs> this way, they blended in by looking and acting like the fairies and spirits in order to avoid being harmed by them. Playing pranks. Uh-huh. A lot of people celebrate Mischief Night on October 30th, where mm. you play pranks on each other, and this is where it comes from. This is not the purge. No. <laughs> <laughs> Salon was even nicknamed Mischief Night in some parts. So, since people are wearing costumes and imitating these malicious uh-huh. spirits... Playing pranks just kind of was a natural progression of oh, that because yeah. they're like, now we're going to play pranks and they would blame them on the fairies. Mm-hmm. Playing pranks at Salon is recorded in the Scottish Highlands as far back oh as 1736. Gosh. I love that. I that's, that's so just, fun. Oh, yeah. I just love thinking about people so playing cute. around, having a good time. Yes. Trick or treating. Mm-hmm. So back then, there was a thing known as mumming or guising oh. when this is when people would put on costumes and they go house to house to perform <gasps> plays. Oh my gosh. And they would do this on various holidays, not just Samhain. Right. But it's for Samhain. Like carolers. Yeah, basically. For Samhain, they would go door to door in costume, reciting verses in exchange for food. That's adorable. So obviously this evolved into right. trick-or-treating. Yes. Jack-o'-lanterns. Okay. Again, in an effort to ward off evil spirits, Ancient Celts would hollow out turnips because that's what was like uh, commonly grown around there. And they would carve them with menacing faces and put them out on their doorsteps and they put candles down inside them. So if you really want to see something super weird and disturbing, just Google turnip turnip jack-o'-lanterns. They're horrifying. <laughs> they look like actual mummified birds. Right, yeah, because like, they shrivel up and yeah, yeah. When I, and they're whitish. Mm-hmm. When I saw a picture of one, I was like, "What is that?" I'm like, "Oh my god, it's a turnip." <laughs> yeah, I don't know that I would know what a turnip looks like anyway. It, I don't eat those on the regular. No, so. I'm not sure I've ever had a turnip. Anyway, <laughs> pumpkins were easier to carve and not native to Ireland, so that's what became more widely used as the tradition evolved. Gotcha. Okay, so. Even though a lot of things about Halloween and Samhain look the same, mm-hmm. it's important to remember that they aren't the right. Same. Right. The focus is different. I'll see posts all over the place that are like, "Is Samhain just Halloween?" No. Right. Halloween is about having fun. Mm-hmm. Samhain is more spiritual or religious. Right. Something you're partaking in. And yes. Celebrate. Yeah. So Halloween is like a lighthearted reenactment mm-hmm. where you scare yourself for fun. Right. Samhain is not about that at all. It's about Honoring the dead and respecting the past. Most Samhain rituals are held in private Mm -hmm. rather than public. There's no reason you can't celebrate both, of course. I'm just saying don't celebrate Halloween and call it Samhain. Right. Halloween is Halloween. Right. (laughs) Um, They're not interchangeable words. You go for two hours and get your candy and dress up and come back and... Yeah. Hate yourself for getting so much candy and... (laughs) Taking all the recent cups yeah, and still exactly. your children's peanut butter candy. Yeah, sounds amazing. So, finally, mm-hmm. if you are looking for some ways to celebrate Samhain, go on a nature walk. Mm-hmm. Observe the colors, smells, sounds, everything that makes fall, fall. 
That's Autumn, Rachel. <laughs> That's one of my favorite I love British jokes. I'm and Rachel's dad. Hey. And Rachel's dad. I know. Rachel's dad now listens to the podcast. I love it so much. <laughs> Reflect on the cycle of the seasons, how the trees drop their leaves, plants die, animals hibernate, and pay attention to your own part of that cycle. Death and rebirth is an important part of nature. If you want, you can pick up a few objects to bring home. Decorate your home with natural symbols of the season. Pumpkins, corn stalks, gourds, acorns, and apples. You can do as much of this. Scented witch rooms. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> Cinnamon, everything. Mm-hmm. Um, you can do as much of this as you want. Just make a centerpiece for your table. Right. Or just go all out with like yeah. your mantles and all through the house and yeah. the porch, whatever. Pull out photos and mementos of your loved ones, family, friends, pets, whoever, and display them wherever you want. Put some candles out, talk to them, or just quietly sit with them, whatever's most mm-hmm. comfortable for you. You could thank them for their role in your life, update them on the past year, or you can just sit by them and journal. We yeah. all know I'm a big, big fan of journaling. Oh, yes. Talk to some of your older living relatives and ask them to share stories of family members who are no longer living. Oh, that's so fun to do. I yes. love that so much. You can record those or write them down, but it can be a great way to start a really cool family heirloom that could just be passed mm-hmm. down and carried on by your future generations. Yeah. Visit the gravesite of a loved one, take flowers or herbs and just tend to their grave, cleaning it off and making it nice for them. Or if you're not near your own family's grave sites, just take a meditative walk in a cemetery. Have you ever seen the woman on TikTok who cleans old tombstones? I love her so much. I do too. Every time I, I watch it, I'm like, on those. I want to like, do I, that. Yes. I love it. Yeah. I, want, I get stuck I, Like, I too. wonder how, like, did she get permission from the cemeteries to do that? Like, I wonder what. I watched a video once where she talked about okay. that. And I think she does usually like ask permission. Yeah. Uh, but a lot of people, it's like whoever's the stone mm-hmm. belong to, their family's gone. gone. Yeah. And nobody's cared for it in years, okay. clearly. And I think it's just such a sweet thing she does. Yes. And she talks about like she researches those people and will talk about them. Yeah. Yeah. I think you guys, if you've never heard of her, you could probably Google woman on TikTok who cleans old graves and yes. you'll find her. It's really incredible to watch. It's also something very satisfying about it watching really this grave. It's just her scrubbing clean and it comes so clean. Yes. Yeah. It just makes me want to go do it. If you're on the Patreon, there'll be a blog post up soon of other ways you can celebrate. It'll go in more into tarot and crystals and things like that. Mm -hmm. Okay, so the takeaways here are this. Whether people who celebrate Halloween realize it or not, they're taking part in ancient pagan traditions that are rooted in the celebration of the inevitable cycle of death and rebirth. And while it might seem strange to some people to celebrate darkness and death, it's more about the perspective this offers. I think it's natural for most people to just want to focus on the light, but you can't have one without right. the other. Yeah. There's no light without darkness. There's no life without death. And you have to have one to appreciate the other. Right. And while I was thinking about all of this, this is just something that came to mind that I thought some of us might need to hear. Life isn't always happy. It isn't always easy. You as a human being are not always going to be happy. And you don't always have to be easy for other people. You're not always going to make the right choice or say the right thing. And that's not something to be ashamed of or sad about. It just, it's what makes you human. So if you're in the habit of beating yourself up for past mistakes, remember that those dark parts of our past are there so that we can learn and grow and be a light for other people. Don't judge your past decisions based on your present knowledge. You know, in many cases, you know what you know now because of how you messed up before. Right. Also, Perfection is incredibly boring. Exactly. <laughs> and I loved that so much that I have yeah. now created a sticker and a t shirt <laughs> design so that you'll find in the podcast store right yes. now. Yeah. If you want to go look for the Perfection is Incredibly Boring shirt. And then there's a new sticker sheet that has the Perfection is Incredibly Boring sticker mm-hmm. on it. It also has someone in the Facebook group had requested a I'm so good at words yeah, sticker. Oh gosh, and so yes. that's on there too, and a few other things. Yes. So that's all. Happy Salon. We love yeah, you. Yeah, we do so much. Um, thank you all for listening to this podcast. Mm-hmm. It's been two years now, right? right? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> wow. And it's been great. Yeah. And we're just happy that you guys are here. We love the little community that we have with you all. It's so much fun. Yeah. So thank you so much. Yeah. All right. We love okay, you. Thanks so much. Goodbye. Goodbye.